steam turbine thrust bearings, balancing the power. Welcome to my YouTube channel I am Engineer Umar. Today, we are diving deep into one of the most critical components inside a steam turbine, the thrust bearing. It's the hidden hero that keeps the turbine rotor balanced and stable under extreme axial forces. In a steam turbine, if the rotor thrust increases beyond the design limit, it can cause serious damage to internal parts. To control and maintain the correct thrust, shims are used behind the thrust bearing. By adding or removing these thin metal shims, the bearing position is adjusted, ensuring the rotor stays balanced and within safe axial limits. This simple adjustment helps protect the turbine from vibration, rubbing, and misalignment. 1. Introduction to Thrust in Turbines In a steam turbine, the high-pressure steam flows through multiple stages of blades. This steam pushes the blades to rotate the shaft, but it also generates an axial force, a force that tries to push the rotor in one direction, usually towards the exhaust. This force is called thrust. 3D animation of steam pushing rotor axially. To control this force and prevent the rotor from moving forward or backward, thrust bearings are installed. They absorb the axial load and maintain rotor alignment. 2. What is a thrust bearing? A thrust bearing is a type of bearing designed to resist axial load, the force acting parallel to the shaft. Unlike radial bearings, which support the weight of the rotor and allow it to spin, thrust bearings prevent forward or backward motion of the shaft. Tilt pad thrust bearing versus flat collar bearing. Steam turbines usually use tilt pad thrust bearings, which consist of several pads arranged around a thrust collar. These pads can tilt slightly, allowing a thin film of oil to develop between the pad and the collar, reducing friction and distributing load evenly. 3. Why is thrust control important? If axial thrust is not controlled properly, the rotor can shift towards one end. This can lead to blade rubbing with diaphragms or casing, seal damage, shaft misalignment, rotor bowing, catastrophic turbine failure, Rotor rubbing with casing, oil film breakdown, vibration graph spikes. That's why thrust balance and control are absolutely essential for safe turbine operation. 4. How thrust is generated in turbines. Let's understand how this thrust is generated. As steam flows through nozzle and blade stages, it accelerates and changes direction. This change in momentum creates a reaction force. Steam hitting moving blade, Change in momentum arrow. In an impulse reaction turbine, the thrust arises from both impulse and reaction stages. The greater the steam velocity and pressure drop, the more the axial force on the rotor. 5. Thrust bearing location and design. Thrust bearings are usually placed at one end of the rotor, typically near the high pressure end. A thrust collar is mounted on the rotor shaft and rotates with it. The thrust bearing pads are mounted stationary and lubricated by high pressure oil. Lubrication system showing oil film between pad and collar. Each pad can tilt independently to ensure proper oil film thickness and even load distribution. 6. Use of shims in thrust bearing adjustment. When the turbine starts operating, sometimes the thrust force exceeds the designed value due to steam imbalance or stage wear. In such cases, shims are added or removed from behind the thrust bearing housing. Inserting, removing thin metal shims behind thrust pads. Shims are thin metal plates that adjust the position of the thrust bearing. By changing the shim thickness, the bearing's location is fine-tuned to meet the desired thrust load balance. For example, if the forward thrust is too high, additional shims may be inserted behind the front thrust pads to move the rotor slightly backward. 7. When thrust bearing starts losing load. Over time, a thrust bearing may lose its ability to carry axial load. This can be due to pad surface wear, loss of oil film pressure, oil contamination, improper clearances, thermal distortion, worn pad surface, oil starvation animation. When this happens, the rotor begins to move axially, leading to contact with stationary parts or vibrations. In some extreme cases, the entire thrust is transferred to the reverse pads or even to the opposite end of the turbine, which is extremely dangerous. 8. Thrust Measurement and Indicators 
Modern steam turbines are equipped with thrust position indicators and load sensors. These sensors continuously monitor rotor axial displacement, thrust load in forward and reverse pads, oil film thickness, film projector hash, control room visuals, digital thrust readings, alarms, trend graphs. Alarms are set to trigger if the thrust crosses safe limits, prompting operators to reduce load or trip the turbine if needed. 9. Troubleshooting thrust loss. When thrust loss is detected, maintenance engineers perform. 1. Visual inspection of the thrust pads. 2. Oil analysis for contamination. 3. Clearance checks. 4. Shim adjustment. 5. Pad replacement if required. Film projector hash, workshop visuals, pad polishing, shim stack replacement. Reshimming the thrust bearing is a precise job. Even a 0.1 mm change can alter the rotor's position significantly. 10. Typical materials used. Thrust pads are usually made from steel backing with a Babbitt metal layer. Babbitt is a soft alloy that allows for smooth operation under high speed and pressure. Film projector hash, macro view of Babbitt alloy on thrust pad. The thrust collar is hardened steel, designed to withstand wear from pad contact and oil film pressure. 11. Thrust balancing methods. Many turbines use balance pistons to reduce thrust load. These pistons create a reverse force to cancel out forward thrust. Despite balance pistons, small residual thrust still exists, which is absorbed by the thrust bearing. 12. How much thrust is acceptable? The acceptable thrust load depends on Turbine size Design speed Bearing type for example, a medium turbine may have a design thrust of 10 to 20 knots, while large turbines can handle up to 100 knots or more. Design thrust limit versus actual load reading. During operation, thrust must stay within plus or minus 5% of the design value for safe operation. 13. Maintenance best practices. To ensure thrust bearing health. Maintain clean oil supply. Monitor axial displacement daily. Avoid steam imbalance. Inspect during every shutdown. Replace pads if where exceeds limits. Calibrate thrust probes regularly. Lubrication system check, maintenance crew in action. 14. Case study, thrust failure incident. At a 120 MW plant, thrust loss due to pad oil starvation caused the rotor to move forward by 0.4 millimeters. The result. Diaphragm rubbing, blade.